Banana Slamma. He's the leader of the bunch, you know him well. This week's character breakdown is DK, whose first appearance was in the 1981 arcade version of Donkey Kong, and some fun facts about our favorite ape before we expand. Universal Studios took Nintendo to court in 1982 over the similarities to King Kong, but was ruled in favor of Nintendo that the two are different and King Kong was public domain. The phrase, it's on like Donkey Kong, is trademarked by Nintendo, as of August 2013. Are you noticing a pattern here? And Nintendo of America didn't expect Donkey Kong to be a success, but it became a top seller through the summer of 1983. What's up, YouTube? I'm Choctopus. This week, we are breaking down Donkey Kong, the king of swing. You guys remember that game? <laughs> anyway, I'm a Donkey Kong main. I play a lot of Donkey Kong, so I've been looking forward to this one for a while, and some of you have been asking for it, but please remember, this is a weekly series, so if there's a character you want to see next week, let me know who it is in the comment section below, and let's get into the breakdown. There's really not much to Donkey Kong's neutrals. His neutral attack is this jab uppercut or this hook uppercut. It's good for disrupting an opponent and also dealing some good damage. It comes out quick, but it doesn't have the best range, but I like to do things like short hop neutral air into neutral attack because if they air dodge it, I'll catch them on the way down with the with the two attacks. Also, you can combo it out of down tilt at lower percentages. You can combo it out of an up tilt at lower percentages. Like I said, it's not the best, but it's pretty good. Donkey Kong's dash attack is this roll. It's really good. I like to use it a lot at lower percentages. So let's bring Pikachu back down to zero. You can chain a couple of them together. So if we hit Pikachu at one, we can follow up with another one immediately and then go into a neutral air or a forward air. At higher percentages, it's a really good setup into a forward air or a down air, even a neutral air off the stage to try and pick up a kill. So if we hit him, we can follow up with a forward air. I missed that one. Follow up with a forward air. You can follow up with a, a down air. You can follow up with a neutral air. So there's a lot of things you can do with his roll. I use it a lot. It has a lingering hitbox. Obviously, if you hit them with the end of the roll, it's going to deal less damage and have less knockback, but it's still pretty good. And you'll deal more damage and have more knockback if you hit them with the beginning of it. But like I said, you're probably going to be using it a lot. I use it a lot. It's a good setup tool, and it's also a decent combo starter. Next up, we have Donkey Kong's Smash Attacks. They're all viable kill options as they're all really strong, but they have a ton of ending lag. So you want to be careful when using them and definitely don't spam them because you're going to get punished every single time. His forward smash is this clap. If you catch them with the hands, obviously it's going to deal more damage because it is a sweet spot attack than if you catch them with the arms. So for lighter characters like Pikachu, maybe towards the end of the stage at 70% if you catch them with the, the hands of the forward smash, you're going to deal more damage and pick up the kill. Donkey Kong's down smash is this double arm hammer. It's the weakest of the three smash attacks, but it's a good option against characters that are doing a lot of rolling. But even against Pikachu, who's pretty light, you'll get a kill at a pretty low percentage. I like to use it as an edge guard, so if somebody is coming up towards the edge, you can catch them, or you can catch them if they roll back onto the stage. Last, we have Donkey Kong's up smash, which is this upward clap. It is a good anti-air option, however, it's not going to hit on the sides like some smash attacks do, so your opponent's going to have to be directly overhead. It's pretty strong in the fastest of the three, so you can do it a couple times in sequence. I like to try and catch characters as they're coming down, or even if you knock them off the stage. If they're going to recover over you, you can try and catch them. But like I said about DK's smash attacks, they're all pretty slow and have a lot of ending lag, so don't spam them too much because you're just going to get punished every single time. DK's neutral special is the Giant Punch, which is chargeable just like Samus's charge shot. Now, you can cancel it mid-charge if you don't want to get punished as you're charging it. You can charge, you can roll, you can spot dodge, you can shield, and that'll stop it. But once it's full, you'll get that little beautiful gleam in Donkey Kong's eye to let you know that it is. Also, it's not the most subtle of attacks because Donkey Kong is clearly angry. He has smoke coming from his head. He's glowing, so you know that the charge punch is there. When the attack is fully charged, it deals massive damage when it lands. So lighter characters like Pikachu, we can actually kill at around 50% at the end of a stage. Obviously, heavier characters are going to require more damage, but the attack is also going to come out faster if it's fully charged than if you do it just mid-punch. Now, I like to do it out of a side special, which is the headbutt, and it buries them, because... If they don't jump out of it, or if they don't unbury themselves, you can get them with the punch while they're in there. However, if 
you know that your opponent is going to be jumping out of it. I like to play some mind games, and when they jump, I'll catch them in the air with the punch. Last thing to note is that the Giant Punch Fully Charged does have some super armor. Now, moving on to the Side Smash, which is this headbutt, which, like I said, I like to combo into a Giant Punch if you can hit it. Uh, it, this thing destroys shields. I love it. It also buries your opponent, so you can do things like a down smash out of it. You can do a forward smash. You can do, even at lower percentages, you can do some tilts. But this thing is going to decimate a shield. So if your opponent is shielding and you can catch them with it, it is a viable option to try and break it. The more damage your opponent has, the longer they're going to stay buried. So at higher percentages, like I said, it's a pretty good option to set up into a kill. This attack also has super armor. So from the startup to the hitbox, you'll be able to pull it off even if someone's attacking you, which is really nice. And the last thing to note is it does meteor smash in the air. So probably not his best option, but it's still there. Donkey Kong's down B is the hand slap. I love this attack. I think it's criminally underrated. I use it a lot because it has really good range. If you hit down B and then just continue to hammer B, Donkey Kong's gonna go wild and just beat the hell out of the ground. Now, some good applications for this attack. If you have an opponent that's doing a lot of rolling or you need to space, it has good range and it creates some pretty earth-shaking vibrations. So you can use it as defensive. You can also use it to destroy shields. It's not as strong as the headbutt, but if you get like two or three of these, you can pop a shield in no time. The cool thing about this attack is you could also use it in the air. However, using down B mid-air will only give DK two slaps. It's a good option if you're coming back down to the ground because it has low landing lag. So you can combo it into something like a neutral attack or, you know, you can do it into some tilts. His down B is also one of his 12 spikes. Donkey Kong has a lot of them. So if you do get a character off the stage and you want to try to spike them, or try your hand at landing a down B, get it? Try your hand because, okay, I'm sorry. But you can spike them if you want to. Uh, it's actually pretty fun to do because some people won't see it coming. But my favorite application, like I said, is using it on the ground against characters that are doing excessive rolling or shielding because I know I can break them. DK's up B is his spinning Kong. You can use the thing on the ground or you can use it in the air. I don't really recommend using it in the air because I don't think it has any kill potential up there, not to mention that once you fall, you are completely vulnerable, so you can easily be punished. But on the ground, I think it's a pretty good attack. I don't use it as often as I should, but it's good for ledge guarding. Someone comes back on, you can use a spinning con because it has a really long lasting hitbox because he spins for a while. As far as a recovery goes, it is a really good horizontal recovery, but it's not the best vertical recovery. So you want to be careful with your vertical height when you are chasing someone off with DK, because if you end up under the stage and you're too far down, like down here, you're, oh, hang on. If you end up down here and you go for a kill, you're not recovering. But I think DK's sweet spot for fighting off the stage is somewhere right around under the ledge because his up B, his spinning Kong, doesn't have the best vertical recovery, but it has really good horizontal recovery. So somewhere around here is good for him, but don't go too low. Be super careful because you'll end up just self-destructing every time. Next up, we have Donkey Kong's tilts. His tilts are pretty straightforward. There's nothing fancy about them. However, I do think they're a key part to playing Donkey Kong because they have good range. They come out really fast. They're, they're all slaps. All three of them are slaps. So you have his forward tilt, which is the backhanded slap. It has really good range. It's good for spacing opponents that are directly on top of you. Also, you can angle it slightly up or down by tilting the control stick. I like to use it out of DK's neutral air and back air because... Those are two of his air attacks that have very low landing lag, so at lower percentages, if you catch someone with a back air, or even if you miss it, you can follow up directly with the forward tilt, because most of the time your opponent won't see it coming. Same thing goes for if you're doing a neutral air, you can catch them, go right into a forward tilt, knock them back, and like I said, it's a really good tool for spacing characters that are being very aggressive, and they're right on top of you. His down tilt, you can actually chain a couple of them in a row, which I will do. It also has the chance to trip your opponent, so... If you see, if I get Pikachu enough times, or it's it's random, but I was able to trip Pikachu right there and trip up his attack if he was going for something. I like this because it comes out quick. You can spam it a couple times, so at low percentages, you get like three or four of them in there before your opponent actually techs or DIs or rolls out of it. It doesn't have the range that forward tilt has, but 
like I said, it's a good option, and it's another one that you can combo really well out of a uh, neutral air. Okay, his up tilt. His up tilt is amazing, because like Bowser's up tilt, it is a full swipe with his hand from front to back, so it covers all of Donkey Kong. You can get him in the front, you can get him in the back. It's going to kind of bring them in towards DK, so you can actually do it a couple times to start a juggle. I love using it as an anti-air, because you can get someone that's coming down over you, you can get someone as they're coming over you on the ledge. It's also a good setup into an air combo. But DK's tilts overall are really good. You should use them often, and he's one of the characters that I suggest using a tilt C-stick instead of a smash C-stick. DK's air attacks. I love Donkey Kong's air attacks. I think they're all really good. I think they're all really useful. You have his neutral air, which is this spinning, I think it's a double clothesline, but it's good. You can fast fall out of it. It has good knockback, even at lower percentages. I think it's a good option for ledge guarding because it has a lingering hitbox. Also off the stage, it's a pretty good option for picking up a KO. You have DK's down air, which is this stomp spike or it's this one-legged stomp spike. You can do it out of a short hop. I think it's good on the stage as well for knocking characters uh, off the ground, up in the air for something like an up tilt at higher percentages. But if you're going for a spike, it comes out really quick. So it's one of his better options for securing a kill if you're over your opponent. Next, we have Donkey Kong's forward air, which is this overhead two-handed hammer spike. This thing is one of the meanest spikes in the game. It is so disrespectful if you can land it. But it's a good kill option. It has a long windup, so it's a little tough to hit sometimes. But, you know, he'll swing overhead too. So even if you don't hit them with the spike, you can still pick up a kill off stage. If you want to do it out of a short hop, I mean, it is hard to do because of the, the long time it takes to wind up. But if you land it on the stage, you can actually knock them up. And you can follow up with something like an up air, and then you can start juggling them from there. I think it sets up really well out of DK's dash attack. So at mid to higher percentages, you can dash attack, follow up with a forward air. You can either spike them, but like I said, if you don't spike them, you can still get them with the overhead. Oh, not there. It didn't work. But you can still get them with the overhead because it'll still KO. Next up, we have DK's up air, which is this... Headbutt attack. I love this attack. It's a good option for securing a KO. Also, it is a good juggling tool. So you throw your opponent up, you can start the juggle, and at lower percentages on a lighter character, you can pick up KOs pretty easily. I also like to use this when I'm ledge guarding, or if an opponent is ledge guarding me, I can use it because it comes out so quickly. So if someone's trying to come up, I can get them with the up air, try and knock them back. But... Like I said, it's really good. It comes out really fast. You can use it to juggle. Sometimes you can catch them off guard if they think you're going for a back air and they go over you. Hit them with the up air when they're trying to recover. Last up, we have DK's back air, which is my favorite air attack of his. It is this back kick. It has a little bit of a sweet spot, so if you catch them with the foot, obviously it's going to deal more damage and have more knockback than if you get them uh, with the attack late. You can do this thing on the stage. You can do it from a short hop if you can pivot. Um, I like using it on the stage because I can go right into a forward tilt because it has such low landing lag, but it's probably one of his better options for picking up a kill off the stage because of the horizontal knockback. So if we knock Pikachu off the stage, I like to follow up and you can do a couple of them in a row because it comes out so quickly. I like to use it all day long. Opponent trying to come back to the stage, I will back air, go back to the stage, back air, back air. It comes out so quick, you can just do it a couple times and still be able to recover because it's so low risk. One of my favorite setups into it is a back throw right into a back air, especially at lower percentages, because they won't see it coming and you'll be able to gimp them. Last up, we're going to talk about DK's grabs and his throws. And I think there's more to talk about here than previous characters because he has this interesting forward throw which you can actually walk with your opponent. And then you can do four different throws out of his forward throw. But to talk about the more basic ones first, you have his back throw, which like I said, I like to set up into back airs. I think it's a really good uh, end of stage. It's also really strong. So you can just grab your opponent and kind of pluck them off the stage at higher percentages and get a kill that way. You have his down throw, which he'll throw you on the ground. Not my favorite of the, the four. Then you have his up throw, which I think is a really good start to up tilts and juggling. And then you have his forward throw, which initiates this walk sequence where you can do four more throws out of it. So you can throw them forward. You start your forward throw. You can throw them up. You can throw them down. And then you can throw them backwards. 
So once you grab them and you start walking, his forward throw just throws them right off the stage, or you can throw them wherever you want. I think it's good for some stage control. You have the up throw, which is also good to set up into a forward air. I'm sorry, an up air or an up tilt, which is good for juggling. You have his down throw, which is this little bear hug. I don't, <laughs> I probably use that one the least, but it's good to throw your opponent off because most of the time they think you're going to do something else. So it's good for some mind games. And then you have the back throw, or sorry, the, the forward back throw. Now, let's talk about stage spikes, because one of the cool things and things I love to do with Donkey Kong is stage spiking. So, if you have your opponent at a decently high percentage, now Pikachu has a good recovery, so probably going to make it back to the stage every time. But if you grab your opponent and you start walking forward, you can throw them against the stage. And you can pick up a KO just by throwing them against the... The angled part. Now, it's very risky because Donkey Kong does not have the best horizontal recovery. I'm sorry, best vertical recovery. He has decent horizontal recovery, but you're going to have a hard time if you don't time it right because you're not going to be able to recover. So you don't want to do it too early because they'll bounce right back up and they'll go above the stage. So you kind of want to be a little bit patient, wait a second, and then throw them. That didn't work there. And you want to try to throw them at the bottom of the stage. But like I said, this is a pretty risky move, but it is a lot of fun to do. As a DK main, I've been doing this for a while. Um, I find that it's best to kind of jump off the stage and then try and throw them because the angle is a little better. But, you know, you can even do a, a forward throw, which is not as good. I think back throw is probably what you're going to be using the most if you're going for a stage spike. So that's it for DK's breakdown. DK is not only my favorite Smash character and my main, but he's also my favorite Nintendo character in case you couldn't already tell. Now, a little bit of information about DK's matchups. He's going to struggle against characters that are fast, that can juggle him around, or characters that have a lot of projectiles that can zone him. So a character like Rob, I'm going to struggle all day long because he can just zone me with his gyro and his lasers. But DK's real strength is his strength. So if you could get in there and deal the damage, you can pick up the kills because he is a very strong, good heavy. If you've never played Donkey Kong, I highly recommend just picking him up, giving him a shot. He's a lot of fun to play. That's why I love playing him. But that's it for DK's character breakdown. If you enjoyed it, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I do character breakdowns every Friday as well as other Smash and Nintendo content. We do stuff during the week. We have Super Mario Maker coming out in June. I can't wait to do some content on that. You have Pokemon Sword and Shield, which I'm really hyped about. You also have the Link's Awakening remake coming out hopefully at the end of the year. So if you're into that kind of stuff, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so you get notifications when I post new videos. Now go forth, play some DK, pick up some wins. If you have any more questions, feel free to tweet at me. I am on social media on Twitter. You can follow me on Instagram as well. If you want to join my Discord channel, we have a cool community in there. I also stream a couple times a week. Go to my Twitch channel, link in the description below. You can find my my uh, schedule there, as well as follow me when you want to get notifications when I go live. But thanks for watching. Have an awesome day, and we will catch you in the next one. Later.